What's up? What's up? What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to another episode of the Grief Bully Podcast. I am your host, Jay Nicole. Today is Monday, August the 24th. We are back in the studio, rocking and rolling, about to get underway with episode 53. I'm excited about today's episode. Before we get into that, last week was amazing. It was our one-year podiversary episode. We had the lovely Dr. Summer Wayans on there. Listen, When I tell you that she dropped so many healing gems, so many gems, so much knowledge, so much love, so much light, I definitely want to encourage you to go back, listen to that episode, watch the episode on YouTube. You can listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all of that good stuff. Definitely go check it out. DM me, hit me up, hit up Dr. Summer Wayans. Let us know what you thought. We definitely enjoyed that episode. We celebrated our one year last week, so super excited about that. Before we go any further, I always want to thank our sponsors, BetterHelp. That's Better H-E-L-P. They are an online counseling therapy organization where you can have your sessions through chat, text, video message, so forth and so on. It's so, so convenient and flexible. It's also very affordable. It's about $65 per session. And and when you use my link, trybetterhelp.com forward slash the grief bully, you will receive 10% off your first month. Again, that's trybetterhelp, H E L P.com forward slash the grief bully. Guys, listen, I haven't had a solo episode in a while, and I'm excited about that. I've had a lot of phenomenal guests coming on lately, and today is no different. I am not in the studio by myself today. I do have on today a dope, dope artist, a female recording artist, rapper, just a dope overall personality, swagged out hair, always fly. All right, this is going to rhyme because we got on recording artist Young Kai today. Kai, what's up? Hey, man, what's up, Jay the Bully? <laughs> Not much. I am looking forward to having this conversation with you today. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule, especially during these difficult times, to come on to the show and talk talk today about something that a lot of people, you know, don't really talk about and that, that I feel is very important to do. So I reached out. I'm like, hey, listen, I know your artists, your, your fans, your following know you by your music. You, you dropped a comment on one of my posts and I'm like, you know what, this might be a dope conversation for us to have and just talk about grief, life and all of those things. So what's been going on in your world? How's everything been going during this crazy pandemic? Man, it's just not like pandemic, but the whole uh, retrograde going on in August. Like I feel as soon as August came in, it was just crazy for me. Like one thing after the other. And I feel like it's like nonstop, but I feel like it's like that for everybody. Um, I don't know if you are even into any of that stuff, like the way the planets are like aligned. I hear a little bit about it here and there, but yeah, so it's just been crazy since August started. But overall, you know, I'm I'm just grateful. Yeah, grateful is definitely a good place to try to be in and try to stay in during these crazy difficult times. And I know we always have these things that happen in our life that are very unpredictable. And grief and loss is one of those things. And so it was very important for me to launch this podcast and to help, especially my community at the time. I'm like, listen, I feel like these are things that we go through and we don't talk about enough. And then it's just expanded and there's grief doesn't discriminate. And so it was very important for me to touch everybody. But today I do want to talk about just from like an artist standpoint and dealing with loss. I, I know you did lose your niece's mother. And so we'll touch on your experience with that. And then, you know, any other grief to that extent that you want to open up about. So maybe we could just start there. Like, how was that experience for you? Man, listen, actually, I actually brought up a, a picture from a newspaper. Her name's Makia. I don't know if you could see it. Makia yeah, I can see. It. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, she passed away July 1st to uh, 2013 and she was only 33. So she was, you know, super young. And um, I guess that's the reason why I I really can't stand cigarettes, man. Cause I feel like, you know, that was the cause of it. She died, she passed away of uh, cancer. So Um, yeah, like I, I already like, don't like the smell of cigarettes. 
already couldn't stand it. And then when that happened, it was just like, man, made it, uh, made me d dislike it even more. So, uh, but yeah, she, she I, um, <clears throat> I never met my, like, I never got to know my grandparents. So I can't really like, I apologize if like the stories are kind of short, but I never like the people that passed away in my life. I never really got, got to know, but Makia was someone that I actually got to know when she was a great person. And then, you know, leaving my, my, my niece behind and, and so young, it, it was like, I just, I couldn't understand because I grew up with both my parents. So I couldn't understand how that could happen to how, how someone so young, you know, she was a baby uh, practically and, and for a baby to, to, to lose their loved ones, you know, like I just, that part, I just, I try to understand and it, it's hard. Like I try to put myself in, in her shoes, you know? So it just, it's, it was like double the pain because I lost someone that I knew that I knew was a great person. And then I, I felt the pain for my niece. Yeah, that's, that's deep right there. Thank you for sharing that. And I, I do have to echo those sentiments as well with the cigarettes and the smoking and, and all of that stuff like that. It's, it's definitely had an impact on my life as well. That's awfully young, like you said. And so I'm assuming you, you were also were pretty young dealing with that as well. How was it as far as being able to navigate and figure out how to deal with those emotions and where to channel it and redirect that energy and heartbreak? It was just, again, something that I just, I was trying to understand because I was still evolving as a person. Uh, 2013 was probably one of my, my worst years, like, and then losing her, like, just topped it off for me. Like, already things kind of weren't going in the direction that I needed it to go in. So it was already a hard, hard year for me overall. Um, but yeah, again, like I wasn't fully evolved. I felt as a person, I still wasn't ready, like spiritually and mentally. Um, I, I wasn't ready. So, but now, now that I'm a little bit more evolved and stuff, and like, I, I feel, I have this perception of life now that I could, I feel like I could better understand like why things happen and why people say things happen for a reason. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but, do um, you, do you go ahead. Believe, so you believe that everything happens for a reason or are you saying that your perspective okay. change as far as that philosophy? Absolutely. Like I, I, I'm a strong believer in that, that things really do happen for a reason. Just for the fact that I feel like I've experienced enough things to kind of like understand why things happen for a reason. So it, it's like, it's like connecting the dots. It's like, it's like life is a, is a puzzle, you know, and like you're trying to figure out which pieces go where. So it's definitely like, it's all about experiences, man. And, but, um, but Makia was uh, one of the few people that I, that, that I lost that I actually got to know. Um, I actually, I, I lost an uncle recently and, um, him, I didn't, uh, he, he lived in Puerto Rico. He's actually, um, the father of like, a a really talented, uh, music producer who he's been producing for like a lot of major celebrities and, um, especially like in the Spanish industry, like, uh, like the reggaeton, um, he's produced for like daddy yankee and like big names like that and um yeah like he he was someone that i wanted to actually uh show my music to which i i unfortunately i, I never got the chance to to meet him in person um my dad used to go out there and um do like family meetings in, in puerto rico like family gatherings i still have yet to visit puerto rico i've never been there yet but hopefully i'll still get to to visit and um meet my cousin for the first time and um and his wife but yeah 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 hopefully i have grandparents like my grandparents i never really got to to know from from my mom's side or my dad's side um i remember like a little like bits and pieces from my my mother's side of the family like uh spending time with my grandmother and my mother always used to tell me that my grandma was like crazy about me like I was like her favorite you know so 
So yeah, like the, it, it's really Makia is probably like the first like loved one that I could say that I really got to know and had passed away. Yeah, I mean, I think that's something that's very important there is that there's, you can experience a lot of losses by, so bear with me when I say this, so like by title. So for example, your grandparents, someone might naturally just assume that someone is closer to their grandparents than they are to their niece's mother. And so that loss might have had more of an impact, but I always base it on relationship. And so that's a person that you actually met, you knew they were young, so probably not too far in age from where you are. And like you said, and something that you said that I want to kind of go back to is the double loss. So you said that you lost Makia, and then you also had to grieve and deal with the fact that your niece now doesn't have her mother. How has that changed for you, or did that change or impact your relationship with your niece? Um, yeah, and I mean, it definitely grew closer. Um, it definitely gave me a, a new perspective in life. It made me look at like how grateful you know how much more grateful i should be to have my parents around you know um so things like that definitely um yeah i think it's like i'm just remembering like i'm 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 in that moment right now i'm like trying to you know just kind of remembering and it makes me like a little sad you know and then like looking at her picture you know like it just kind of it hits me you know yeah let we can stay there I think that's super important and I respect you and I have so much admiration for the fact that you can even articulate that and say like hey I'm I'm having a moment right now because that's the thing when I have people come on my show I understand I always say this and I write this in the email that it's to your comfort level where you want to have the conversation go because we're not talking about entertainment and the latest shoes that dropped or something that's just about pure comedy. Granted, we do laugh here and there, but this is real life stuff. We're talking about things that people go through. And a lot of times, I'm not sure if this is your story or not. When people come on this show, it's the first time that they're actually really talking about some of these losses that they've experienced. And so, you know, I just want to encourage you to just be kind and let's be patient. Let's sit there. What, what feelings is it bringing up for you? If anything you want to talk about as far as that, we can, I mean, cause looking at the picture, I can understand how that could be, could be tough. Yeah. I mean, like, um, she was just a, like a great person, man. Like, and, um, It's just, I hate seeing good people go like that. Like, you know, that's really what I think about when I see her picture and think about it, you know? Yeah, it is, it is hard sometimes to wrap your mind around that. A lot of times someone being so young and then you look at everything having a purpose and a reason. And sometimes I've questioned myself with things like, well, you know, what's the purpose for this? Someone that's, you know, in their thirties and they have a young child and then, you know, now they're not here. And so being able to process that and cope with that. And when you revisit it, it definitely makes a lot of sense that it would bring up certain feelings and emotions. It seems like you have learned lessons from it as far as like not taking your parents for granted and just a different perspective on life and that it it hasn't stunted you. Have you saw any benefit in your music as far as being an artist and being able to articulate how you feel? Like, did you write any music that was attributed to her or express any of those emotions? Um, it's crazy you, uh, you, know, you mentioned that because honestly, like, um, this is kind of like inspiring me to write something on it. I never actually like, uh felt like I was ready to do that, I guess, you know, but um but I think I'm I finally think I am ready to express myself. I've expressed myself in other other types of hurt, you know, but uh I, I, I never went that deep actually in my in my music as far as like uh my personal life. I'm I'm just now I guess starting to go into that phase where I'm going deeper with my, with my lyrics. So 
I yeah, will. I'm, I will be doing creating some music based on on this. I will be definitely looking forward to hearing that because I feel like that's something that you can't. Not that people make up their music, but when those types of emotions and feelings come out, and it's just like you on a whole different level. And a lot of people don't know that that's considered a coping mechanism. And so being able to, instead of shying away from the conversation or saying, hey, you know, I don't want to talk about it. I'm not saying you do this, but some people, and I've done this, I, I don't really want to get into that. You know, I'm, I'm just going to go in the booth and I'm going to just let, let, let it out, let it have it and see what actually comes up. Sometimes it's harder and it takes time to get to that point. But I think, too, because you didn't rush it and didn't just make music based around it because you felt like you should or you know maybe this would be dope but versus like you know what I think it's time to really let this part of me out I really think that that can be will be something dope and I'm sure that you know she would be proud of you and your niece and, and your family as far as that that is concerned I'm, I'm proud I'm just I'm just I know it, it, it can sound crazy because we don't know each other well although we have had a conversation but just seeing people be able to come to that moment of like, you know what, I do want to release this. I do want to get this out. And I mean, I think that's the point because a lot of people don't feel comfortable going to say therapy or anything like that. And even though I advocate and I want to encourage people to go and seek counseling and therapy, because those are professionals that are paid to do that. I have a grief therapist. I actually just had an appointment on Monday and I felt, I felt like, Hey, I don't really have anything to talk, talk about. I'm doing great. As soon as the conversation started, I couldn't stop talking about all the things that were wrong. But I also think just general conversation like this, just dialogue with somebody that you know has experienced loss as well and, and been there, although the situations are not exactly the same, it's, it's beautiful. It's something powerful to be said about it. And I'm not just saying that because this is my show. I'm saying it because I'm just happy to be a part of this purpose that I believe I was led to do for these types of conversations. Yeah, I mean, I I, uh, I admire you actually for, for for doing something like this, man. Like, um, cause this is this is the first time I ever actually spoke about this. So if it wasn't you know for your show, I, I really probably wouldn't be speaking on this. So, uh, th thanks for doing something like this, cause it's I I admire uniqueness, like thing original stuff, you know, like things you don't usually talk about. Like I like thinking outside of the box. So this show to me is very, you know, outside of the box and I dig it, man. So I appreciate you um, doing this for me. No, thank you. You're doing this. You're doing this for yourself, but I understand fully what you're saying. You're about to make me tear up, fill in some type, some type of way. Man, you know, I, man I just, I'm, I'm actually, I can get really, really passionate about, you know, that that's how I am like with my music, you know, like whatever topic, if, if it's an angry topic, I'm going to be angry, <laughs> you know, if it's a happy one, I'm going to be feeling that, that emotion. Like, I feel like that's, that's the key of doing great music. It's really being in the moment. Um, so yeah, like I'm just, you know, in the moment right now. So I, I, I don't mean to get like teary and stuff. No, I'm, I'm happy. I know that sounds, I know that sounds crazy to some people to say that I'm happy that you're getting teary because this is the thing. When it comes to grief, the definition of grief is deep sorrow. And so a lot of times, and what my main mission is to talk about the loss of loved ones, but it really means deep sorrow, and that's the grief part of it. But the part that I believe is, is missing, and that's a huge piece that a lot of people struggle with, myself included, is the mourning part of it. And so the mourning part of it is actually the tears and the expression and being able to allow ourselves to be in that moment and feel that vulnerable, right? I mean, let's face it being vulnerable is not the most popular emotion. It's not the thing that most people love and enjoy doing. But I also believe in that space of vulnerability, there's so much opportunity to grow. There's yeah. so much opportunity to become a better person. And it doesn't always look pretty. I think that's the other thing is that growth, in my opinion, doesn't always look pretty. And so we might not even realize that we're growing because of how negatively we can be experiencing or expressing our emotions or just how bad it feels. But in my life, some of those real deep, dark moments have produced the best parts of me. How about yourself? Man, it's, it's what I am. It's what defines who I am today. You know what I mean? Like it's all about experiences and 
going back to everything happens for a reason. All those times I had grief and, you know, cried freaking tears till I couldn't cry anymore is, is why I'm here today. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, it's just, I, I, I've, I'm grateful for the mistakes I've done because they're, they're not mistakes. They, they end up being lessons, you know, that make you smarter, make you stronger. So I'm grateful, like, just for everything, like, even, even the, the bad, the bad, the good and the bad, like, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for it all. Like. Yeah, and it's super important to give our story legs. I think sometimes we underestimate our stories when we're strong people and we just get through things and we're like, you take it for granted that everybody can get through, but there's things that I'm sure you've been through, I've been through, our audience has been through that we've never even told people, that we've never even talked about, you know, and so that's why I think it's important to have those healthy coping mechanisms like music and writing and sports and fitness and things like that, that can help us in a, in a, positive way to get that because actually my shirt we can't even see it but it says if you knew my story and that's a shirt that means so much to me because I truly believe that I stand by it this is why we, we created them because everybody has a story but if we knew people's story we probably more than likely would handle them and address them in a different way so like even that cashier that's like being rude or or being nasty or whatever it's easy to just snap back at them but I, I don't know what that person went through I don't know if they have a parent dying or if they their kid just this or that and it's not an excuse but it also is a reality that a lot of us are products of our experience and so if we don't know different, then, then it's kind of difficult to, to assume that we will do different and be better in that way so what I definitely want to do right now, though, is I want to bounce into our In Love and Memory segment, which is a part of our show that's very important to me to humanize and say the names of people who have passed away, our angels, our loved ones, because I do think in life they can often get forgotten and, and overlooked by other people. And sometimes not necessarily say that we forget them, but we don't really say their name because it's kind of like scary and it's uncomfortable and it's, it's hard to do at times. So our in love and memory segment segment this week is going to go out to your niece's mother who we've already talked about beautiful woman i saw her picture and those of you who watch the youtube video will be able to see it again right here we have makia so we want to send our love out to her family to yourself and may she continue to rest well and and fly high and so i definitely wanted to definitely definitely shout her out it was super important for us to do that today so thank you thank you for sharing makia with us i truly appreciate that and another part of our show that's, that I love is, it is so timely for today, is our inspirational boost. It's a part of our show that's brought to us by our sponsors, Adina J Designs. They make, create, and inspire us through decorated apparel with signs, custom tumblers, and all that good stuff. Follow them on social media at Adina J Designs, A-D-E-N-A-J-A-Y-D-E-S-I-G-N-S. -E -E Ask for a discount. They might give you one. I mean, tell them I sent you. Close mouths don't get fed. This quote this week is what we don't want, what we don't need in the midst of struggle is shame for being human. I'm going to say that again. That was, that was deep. What we don't need in the midst of struggle is shame for being human. And that's, that's a quote from Brene Brown. And I, I just think that's fire. And so one time for what we're talking about today is when we're going through that struggle, like we don't, we don't need shame. We don't need to be made to feel bad from other people or for ourselves. I think we have to give ourselves that space to, to move through it. Do you have anything you want to add to that quote or anything it said to you? It's a dope quote. And um, I feel like that's, that's probably like the main thing that people get is shame when, when they go through that stuff. So that's, that's a really uh, good message to put out there. Definitely. So, I, so as we start to wind up the episode, I just have a couple of small things for you. One, I would ask you if you had to give anybody advice to get through a loss or a tough time or anything that has worked for you, what would you, what would you offer to them? If I had to give anyone advice, yeah. it's a tough one just cause, um, not everyone is, is, is spiritual the same way, you know what I mean? So I would have to like really paint a picture for them, you know? Um, 
And you can just drop it how you feel, though. You don't have to worry how, how other people will interpret it. Yeah, back back to that that quote, you know, like everything everything really does does happen for a reason, and I, I feel like people have their like destiny already like written f- for them. You know what I mean? Like, there's always a purpose, and sometimes you just gotta understand that 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 maybe that person just came to this world did their purpose and then it was it was time you know like don't ever look at it as all oh, like like god's punishing you or something you know what i mean i i feel like it's just this part of uh that purpose you know and just just know that that not that that's one more person protecting you you know mm, that's a nice that's a beautiful way to look at it one more person protecting you because i know in my life i definitely look at it like I have my angels. When I pull out of my driveway, I tap the roof of my car twice for my grandma and my dad. Like, our angels, like, be with me today. Like, when I'm driving, be with me in my car. So, I think that is beautiful. Listen, there's one question that I ask all of my guests. And I don't give them the heads up on it because I like to hear the answer. So, if you had to choose a color for your grief, what would it be and why? Color for my grief. Um, no offense to the gray lovers over <laughs> out there, but, uh, I would say, I would say gray, man. Like, uh, just, it's not a very fun color, <laughs> mm. you know? And like, and you know how they say, uh, when somebody's sad or something, they have like a cloud over their head and the clouds are usually grayish, you know what I mean? So with the, with the rain raining on them. So I would say I would say gray. Yeah, no, I rock with that. And sorry, gray lovers, but that's just not a favorable. <laughs> not gray, but, you know, it's, yeah. it's not my favorite color either, but. Gosh, but, you know. But, you know, they say colors, certain colors give you like emotions, like it will make you vibrate higher or lower. And they even use colors to like identify people's like moods and stuff. But yeah. gray would be my, my pick. Nah, so true. And I loved it. Listen, we've had young Kai on the show today. Episode 54. We've been rocking and rolling. 53, 53, 50, yeah, 54. Sorry, 54. We've been rocking and rolling with this episode today. I've had a, I've had a good time. I've had a good time in a, in a connection way that I felt was needed. I felt like that's a dope thing when you didn't know what your soul needed and then it got it and then you're like okay i needed that so thank you for sharing your light and your love and your experience with us where where can we follow you connect with you hear your music i mean i just want the people to get to know you better yeah definitely um my music's available on on all platforms so whatever uh, favorite platform you like uh to listen to mostly um you know itunes google spotify uh title uh, Amazon, er, er, I'm on all of it. So you could definitely check me out on the any music online platform. Um, my IG is I am Young Kai, um, K A and two I's, K A I I, Young spelled regular. Um, I'm on Twitter, simply just Young Kai. So yeah, just perfect. Hard. Google me, you'll find me somewhere. <laughs> Perfect. So I'll definitely make sure that I, I drop those links and then we can everyone can access and get to you and make sure they know they can follow you, support you, show you some love. Listen, from everybody here at the Gratefully Podcast, I appreciate having you come on the show. I'm looking forward to our relationship connecting and growing and, and building. I love your light, your spirit, your energy, and just your whole vibe. I think I think we can do some great things. So I appreciate you with your time today. Guys, thank you for rocking with us for another episode of the Grief Bully Podcast. Check us out on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook. I hang out the most on Instagram. You guys already know that. So definitely follow me there. Hit me up at I underscore AM underscore J Nicole. Guys, till next time, you already know. Love and light. Peace.